This episode of MMA Nuts is brought to you by GoDaddy.com, 99cent.com with code MMA Nuts 99. Save 30% off new orders with code MMA Nuts 30. Dollar per month economy hosting for one year with code MMA Nuts 1H. Glory 34th in Denver, Colorado. Get 10% off tickets with code G34 MMA Nuts. BetDSI. Get $10 in free play with code MMA1 at BetDSI.eu. Cleto Reyes. Free shipping and free tote on orders over $150 with code MMA. MMA Nuts. Defense Soap. Used by more champions in more countries than any other brand. Save 15% off with code MMA Nuts. Hey fans, this is MMA Nuts, episode 311. 311. My name is Ingo Weigold. Matt Griffith, MMA Show. By our fans, for our fans, we're walking line between serious and ridiculous. What's going on? Sorry we had a delay in show. It was a little sore yesterday. Went to the... <laughs> Took a lot of you know. Well, I, well, I can talk about that too. But uh, I went to Great America, and <laughs> I'll just sit here in silence, riding all these roller coasters, and my body can't fucking take the use and abuse anymore. Yeah, they're they're a lot more aggressive than I remember. Mm-hmm. And some of them, like the Superman, you're fucking face down, ass up. The track is above you, nothing below you. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a pleasurable experience. My daughter is next to me, and I'm going. Holy shit! <laughs> Fuck this! Fuck this! <laughs> She's awesome. just laughing at me. I, mean, just, I don't remember him being this aggressive. Did she have old. a good time though? Oh yeah. She's just dying. Oh, okay. I still enjoy the Batman the best. We did, what's the other one? Fucking X Wing X Factor. I don't know what the X fuck Factor. it is. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking uh-huh. bullshit. It's like highway to the danger zone, man. Bow, 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 bow. But well, yeah, and then we, fucking wait two hours and twenty minutes to go in the stupid Justice League ride. Well, Broke down. A lot of shit was breaking down. But anyway, doesn't surprise me. That's the life of a theme park, isn't, isn't it? it? Shit's always breaking. Waiting down. in lines. And, yeah. Uh, no, I was gonna say about um, I got double penetrated this past week. <laughs> See, <and laughs> that, that's what I wanted to mention because uh, you know yeah. I find out I have ulcers or whatever. But anyway, the funny part from all this was the nurse talking to me. And she said she's talking about you know the after effects of you know this double penetration, saying you may experience some rectal bleeding, and I'm I start losing it. I just I'm <laughs> laughing <laughs> because <laughs> what? I don't know why. It's just like funny to hear a woman say rectal bleeding to me. Were you in person when this happened? Yes, oh, we were wow. face to face. What did she say? I, well, I tried to keep it <laughs> together as much as I could, and I'm just. <laughs> It just keeps coming out in a smile, and I'm just trying not to look at her and make contact. She didn't acknowledge me laughing, but I don't know. It's just funny. Yeah. You know, that's you something say you something, say, say between your friends, right? <laughs> oh, I got a rectal bleeding or something. Can you, I didn't quite hear you. Can you say that one more time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I record you? I was laughing this whole time. On my <laughs> iPhone oh. that I may experience rectal bleeding. Oh, we should have got that. Oh, dude, they could have used it like in the pre-roll <laughs> <laughs> or in the intro to the show. Yes. And then what else did I hear? Oh, they gave me Twilight Sedation and that was the movie we couldn't think of last week. We were That's talking it. about the stupid vampires and fucking stupid fucking yeah. Twilight. I, I hate like that. And then that, it sparked me. I'm like, God damn it. I could have used this information on the last show yes somebody was just talking about vampire movies with me over the weekend they were talking about they like twilight i go that's not a fucking vampire movie no that's like some lovey dovey like teeny it's bopper teen shit sparkles bullshit. no i need like glitter Rah! and i just recommended the movie you you uh the the uh the things that what is it uh fuck now i can't my see my brain isn't working that fake documentary with yeah. the vampires yeah yeah uh I know what you're talking you about. Know what I'm talking I don't about. know the name of it. I just what we do in the shadows or yes, something like there that. You go. Yeah, see? It took me a while. I was Bringing like, it out. If you if you were inside my head right now, it was it was like a freaking catacomb of <laughs> like <laughs> trying to connect dots on information. I'm like, there it is. So um what we do in the shadows. It's funny. I don't think yeah. I've laughed that hard in a long time. I remember watching that and just dying because it was it's not It's what you weird, expect. but it's funny weird. <laughs> yeah. Right. So if you like vampire movies, that is a good one. Um, from a different perspective, but fuck Twilight. Yeah, fuck Twilight. And sparkles and sun glittering. Vampires burn in the sun. They don't glisten. That's right. That's nonsense. Um, so, yeah, there was a UFC event over the weekend, too. 204, Ingo. In Most epic Manchester card ever. Something. Well, there are a lot of finishes. I only want to talk about two fights. Gegard Musasi, Vitor Belfort. Second round. Musasi... <laughs> Decides he's gonna kill her. 
head kicks Balfour, and then he's just unleashing hell fury on the man. Left, right, uppercut, left, right, uppercut, uppercut, uppercut. Mm -hmm. uh, he gets him to the ground, gets the TKO. And then uh, this post fight press conference, Musasi, saucy as fuck, huh? Very. Talking about, like, sure dogs got him ranked 10 and fuck that. And then talking about people just are stupid and they just want to see expensive shit on Instagram. Talking shit on Conor McGregor. Talking about how he's he's been the best. And I like it. He's, like, so laid back, but his comments were just... It's, it was the, I think it was the timing in his... The way he would deliver it. And yeah. the, if you Google, there's a... Um, if you Google this, there is a... Is it a MMA fighting one? No, Fox Sports. Fox Sports, if you Google Mosasi, he had they have the just the clips, just the highlights. It's not like mm -hmm. the long thing, just just the. It's funny. You you will you will die laughing because I'm wondering where this guy's been his whole career. I know he's always been like super chill, but this is the version of him I like. Yeah, he has been too laid back, and that's why his style of fighting, like if he can be second round Musasi all the time, yes. and then have that the charisma Sauciness. and the timing. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's like that's what it. we want. Yes. So I like this. I like his chances. I don't know if he's going to get a title shot because God knows what's going to happen in this middleweight division. But well, we talk about the next fight, Bisbing versus Henderson. and Epic war, Matt. The old man almost pulled it off. He's got yes. old man strength and a little controversy. It, you can't have a Michael Bisbing fight and not have a little controversy. Like so. spitting and ball punching? Yeah. Or something. Well... Let's let's just lay out the facts first. So first round, Henderson lands the H bomb, almost finishes him off. Round one, Henderson. Round two, the Bisbing's winning for most of it. Dan H Henderson lands another H bomb. Debatable whether or not he won the second round. I gave the second round to Henderson. Three or four, clearly Michael Bisbing. Fifth round, it's anybody's fight. Pretty close, pretty close. At the end of the fight, Dan Henderson throws like a fucking rolling thunder kick, misses. <laughs> I guess that's the way you want to go out. Like this being ends up on top. Uh, in my book, I got it 48-47, Michael Bisping. Unfortunately, I have to say that. But let's not let's not skirt over the fact that Michael Bisping is a cheater because he did kick Dan Henderson in the balls not once but twice, and the first one went unnoticed. The second one got a warning, and things could have been a little bit different had the first one been a warning, and the second one had a point taken off, because then you would have a draw. Yes, and the interwebs believe draw. that Dan had won this fight. And let me just, I didn't want to stop you because you were on a roll, but holy fuckballs. Okay, you've been KO'd in the most brutal fashion ever, probably, in the UFC. The, it's a high... Dan Henderson has made a fucking logo of this knockout. Yes. And you still get hit with the H-bomb. I, I, Mike. <laughs> Twice. Serious. Three times. <laughs> Seriously, dude. Like, it cannot be that unstoppable, can it? Or is it just that unstoppable? I think it's that unstoppable. <laughs> it's I, like, well, it, it it seems like Bisbing had lapses near the end of the rounds where he just he let himself get hit. And good yeah. God, look at Michael Bisbing's face after the <laughs> fight. Look like he got yeah. run over by a fucking train. Yes. A rape train, if it's you a will. A rape train. Yeah, and they did win fight of the night, though. So, which which I think God was well-deserved, even with all the finishes. Um, I really wanted it for Dan Henderson. Did you? Me too. That's the way to go out. But at the same token, you know, I don't want to bring up one of my favorite fighters in this fashion, but, you know, we watched Chuck go down pretty hard a bunch yeah. of times getting KO'd like crazy and Dan didn't do that I mean he went out on a shield in this fight and if he he, he retired so yeah, he had a big done. speech he's done I mean it's not like he got KO'd he you know he did his best and it was exciting so eh, I, can, I can live with it he's done for now but he'll probably get that itch <laughs> I bet it, all these guys get the yeah. itch well no. you know when we made that sacrifice last week to the MMA guys to try to keep UFC 205 intact. You know, you look at the poster, I think it was GSP, Dan Hardy, mm -hmm. Frank Mir, Shane Carwin. Three of those fighters want to come back. Mm. And Frank Mir is still sticking around and probably should go out. Yeah, sure. You know, everyone, it seems like they retire and they all want to come back. They can't ever scratch that itch. Yeah. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. Um, one thing we forgot to mention was the uh, the brutal knockout of OSP on this card. 
Did you <laughs> yeah, see that? Yeah, and the that. UFC actually pulled that video off off the internet today. Why? I don't know. They pulled it off. They said I think it's because it's too brutal. Something. They pulled it. I. I saw it's fucking fighting. What do you think's gonna I happen? I don't know. Look bad. So I hope OSP is okay. He's just like reminds me of the. Uh, um, was it the. Uh, Prokop versus um, Gonzaga. Gonzaga. Remember how the knee buckle yeah. in that one? It's yeah. very similar fashion. It's a big dude. Um, crazy how you know quickly this this shit happens in that you know opener. No, it was okay. a twist up. So it might not even be twist up. I'm just a man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're I know not pain. There you go. <laughs> Only yeah. rectal pain and bleeding. Yeah. Um. So two of four. You know, I don't know. Did a big Reebok like payday it was like over two hundred grand or something. For all the Reebok guys, because there's there's some veteran guys, tenured on there. fighters. Yeah, right? but Which, you know, looking at that performance from Michael Bisbang, it's a close fight. You know, he almost lost this mm -hmm. to a 46 year old Dan Henderson. Um, if he fights any of the other top four contenders, and maybe even Musasi, throw him in there. Uh, does he win <laughs> if he puts that kind of performance together? I don't Was know. Is it him being too cocky? Or Dan just putting in the performance of his life, you know? Uh, no, I mean, I think Mike can, well, if he can take Dan's punches, I think he can handle anybody's power. The, the question is, is can he melt guys cardio-wise, as he does did with Dan, in a way? I think he would win a decision, at least out of one, one or two of those guys, if, he, if it goes that far. But, yeah, he's getting up there. I mean, it might be, it might be time to retire and... and Chill in the booth, Mike. You know? <laughs> well, uh, that's the question. Like, who who's next for him? You have what? Weidman and Romero are gonna fight, mm -hmm. and then you have Jacare and Rockhold gonna fight, and then you have Musasi sitting in the wings. I mean, 185 is goddamn murderers row right, right now. It's just brutal. A lot of experience, guys. And Bisming should not have the fucking title <laughs> in my book. Like, how does this fucking guy have the title? I don't know. It's unbelievable. Balls, Matt. Balls. Well, he took a fight on short notice, well, so respect for that. But Right time, right place. Yeah. Time will tell. It will. I mean, uh, the shit's going to get answered here shortly, mm -hmm. and we'll see what happens. Yes. Um, you were talking about GSP just a second ago. Yes. And the rumor around the campfire is that he's coming back to fight Anderson Silva. <laughs> what do you think about that? Uh, it's like fucking four years too late. <laughs> okay. Uh, I know personally, I don't want to see that fight. No? I just don't. No interest? Oh. Over you have a GSP who's been out of the sport for two plus years. Close to it. Anderson Silva hasn't won a fight in four years. Yeah. Uh, good. What good is going to come of this at this point? Besides GSP coming out, taking him down, and holding him down for fucking five rounds. That's all I see happening. Or jabbing him to death. Right. Or, but it's post, it's post USADA, so who knows? Anything's possible. I just don't see how that bodes well for Anderson Silva. Hey, in paydays. Getting that money's, Matt. But do you want to see that fight? Not necessarily. I will say this, though. Yeah. It's definitely going to happen because Dana White said there's no chance in hell. <laughs> of GSP course. doesn't want to fight and all this shit. I think they're strong arming him, trying to get him to take less money. Because there was a rumor GSP wanted like ten million or something ridiculous. But yeah, because he's under that old contract when you could have your own sponsors. Right. So he's just saying, "Hey, I'll fight. Just make up the difference." I think he makes had sense. Ten million dollars be fair. In sponsors before. Holy shit. Well, if he had Under Armour, he had all the top. Yeah. I think Gatorade probably all the top of the line sponsors. Yeah, I forgot about that. Because he's he was the the clean cut guy, and he's Canadian, so you hit that whole other market. Yeah. The, that's the question. Is is I want I forgot to ask that last week, but is GSP worth ten million? Not now. No, don't think so. GSP Conor McGregor. Is that uh, worth it? Yeah. Because, well, here's the question. Who the fuck does GSP fight that makes sense? Like, what is the fight that interests you? For GSP? Yeah. Yeah, I'm racking my brain here right now. Uh, BJ Penn. No, no. no. <laughs> BJ Penn 4. Yeah, he GSP, just, BJ he Penn just 4. totally fucked that, was it, Manila card or whatever up? We'll talk about that in yeah, a minute. Yeah. Jeez, GSP. I mean, a Diaz would be interesting. Nick, coming out, coming off his thing, and but we did that already. So it's like, 
I don't know. That's a good question. I'm not all that excited about the, the concept of GSP coming back. I think now that we have got a taste of Conor McGregor and what, what life could be like, I'm not sure I, I'm all that excited about GSP was like the I guy before. I want. Which one? GSP Dan Henderson. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Dan Hendo, one more time. He's coming yeah. out of retirement. The GSP. Fuck GSP up. Him and his fucking aliens and Bigfoot. Okay. I'll buy it. I don't know. That's the only thing I care about. GSP, just stay retired. Be Barry Sanders and just. just he, he can't. He can't. Can't scratch that itch. He's got plenty of money. He can't scratch that itch. I don't worry about that shit. Um. What so I want to talk about this Roy Nelson situation. So the Brazilian sports court accepts a complaint against Roy Nelson, and the attorney is looking for a 14-month suspension and a $185,000 fine. What do you think about this? Ridiculous. Come on. Dude, in Texas, you get, like, a couple grand fine for, like, doing all kinds of shit. Big deal. Nobody got hurt. It's a combat sport. I get he's not supposed to touch the ref. If Big John has a problem, he should go to the commission and complain. I don't think he did any of that. Dude, find him five grand, send him off into the sunset. See you later. No, you got to set an example. I knew this was coming. got to set an example. Uh, You're lucky I'm not running shit because I would treat it like fucking PEDs. Two-year suspension, buddy. I'm not even going to fucking hit you monetarily. It was yeah. a two-year suspension, first offense. Okay. And we're never going to see this happen again. The Roy Nelson clause? Yes. See, I know you have a deep love for Roy Nelson. Well, so. I, I'd say that jokingly, but in reality, he, it should probably be a $30,000 fine and a six-month suspension. That seems fair to me. I don't give a fuck how hard the contact was. You cannot make contact, period. With the ref? Yes. Okay. You have to draw a line. The line is, you can't touch them regardless. Can you trip and fall into them? Maybe. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> With your dick <laughs> in their ass? <laughs> I tripped and fell in that pussy. Sorry about that. I mean your ass. Sorry. Should have was, right? I'm not gay. One in a million shot. Yeah. Hey, we'll 30, see what happens. 30 grand is pretty steep. But this is Brazil, that. too. How do they enforce all of this? You could just be like, fuck you. I'm not going to pay. What are you going to yeah. do? Yeah, well. Is the UFC going to really uphold whatever Brazil says? Probably. Maybe not. I think they might just tell him to go scratch. I don't know. Uh, the whole thing's silly. Let's move on. Right? Yeah, yeah. All right. What else? Um, oh, yeah. So check this. Yeah. Eddie Bravo Invitational 2017 will feature open palm strikes on the ground. What do you think about this? Well, one, where is this going to happen? I think he's talking about Indian reservations. Yes. Because I, I don't know about the legality of it. I'm all for it. He, I know Eddie was talking about it. He said that this will help open up the submissions even more because he's more into everything he wants to do. He wants to see finished by a submission. None of this fucking draw, point none shit. of this advantage, none of this point shit. So if you can palm strike on the ground, it'll open up more stuff. I like it. I don't know how the, the jiu-jitsu guys are going to feel about that. Like, oh, fuck, now i got to deal with palm strikes? What's this yeah. about? I don't know if if they're all going to be cool with it, but hmm. I, I like an extra element of danger in there. Sure. You know? I'm just concerned. Well, obviously, if it's an Indian, Indian reservation, maybe there isn't a commission. But yeah. now that you're starting to hit people, I wonder if this falls under a different jurisdiction than... Like a grappling tournament, because I think grappling tournaments still fall under that whole like wrestling exhibition type stuff where there's not a commission. What happens if they start hitting each other? Then does there have to be one, or what's because yeah, because then well, does that bring into weight classes? Does right. that bring into uh, drug testing? Because you know it's a huge Dude, ain't thing in nobody. fucking jujitsu. Yeah, uh, ninety-nine percent of them are on the sauce, and they're getting high as fuck. Yeah, that too. Of, yeah, both. We always wanted to do the weed versus no weed jujitsu Jiu invitational. <laughs> See, that's a better idea. Caprito versus Eddie Bravo. Oh. You bring your best. We bring our best. Yes. Let's see what happens. Be like a five or ten man like competition. You yeah. gotta make it uneven, like a nine or seven or something. Yeah. You guys gotta get high as fuck though. <laughs> this is like bong rips. It's going crazy. That'd be funny because it'd be interesting to see, based on the results. Here's here's the follow up question. So, you have Eddie Bravo on one side, you have Comprito on the other. He assembles his best team. Eddie gets his best team. They get high as fuck on Eddie's side, and Comprito's side does not. 
but say Eddie's team wins nine out of ten matches, you think that would swing Comprito over to the weed side? No, <laughs> it's very anti-drug. I know. It's really it's really interesting because um, he's such a laid-back dude. But this, this is the one thing like he does not. He he's very anti-drugs, like in general, and and that's okay. Well, I think it, didn't he say it was because he saw? Yeah, I don't know if it was one of his friends or a competitor Died. or someone taking like horse steroids or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Fucking had a heart so attack. So there's a reason behind sure, it. Sure, sure. I mean, I get it. I can respect yeah, it's, it. It's all bad. I mean, I find the, the the struggle I have is with anybody or anything. Is if, if you if you create absolutes anywhere, I think that's not a healthy thing. So you you're have, a Sith Lord then, right? I don't. Th maybe Comprito. Hey, he does. Ha he does have that. You see that picture of him as a Sith, Sith no. Lord? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. it's out there. Somebody did that for him, and it looks real cool. Hey, maybe you never know. It's like a disguise. He's like the laid back dude, but really he's like super monster killer. Yeah. I, I think the absolutes are a problem. You can't. You you can't. I think you cannot make things absolute. There's always wiggle room and leeway, and so with him, it's it's like literally, fuck drugs. Like no drugs. <laughs> it's no good. Right? How about penicillin? Is that a, okay? I think he's fine with that. Antibiotics are all right. Yes, those are cool. Painkiller is probably fine with that, but no alcohol, no fun. I don't think he drinks. No, I mean, he think he he will here and there, but I don't think he does. Like in general, show me some stories, but yeah, he's definitely anti-drug. It's old school thinking, you know. Like it just kind of, you know, it's okay to go to a doctor and get some fucking crazy. Yeah, how's you, yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe we need to have him back on the show. How do you feel about painkillers? Yeah, right. Because you, <laughs> you know, get, like, where's the line? This stupid shit that you can't even feel your own head, but from a doctor and it's legal. Right. But you can't go to like weed is bad because it grows out of the ground. Like right. I mean, it's I don't natural. Know. So it's weird. Don't fear the reaper. <laughs> yeah. Or fear him. It'll all work out. So let's keep with the drug theme. So I might have asked this in the past, but why can't the fans get over to the fact that? Chris Cyborg has used PEDs. Like, it's just a constant slamming of her. And look at her before she used PEDs. We're talking fucking four or five years ago. I don't even know how many years ago this was. And, and we're still talking about it. And then you can, for example, contrast it to like a Josh Barnett who's tested, I think, at least three times positive. Yeah. Nobody fucking talks about that anymore. No. So is it is it a a gender thing, where it's okay for the men to do it, but it's not okay for the women? Why the discrepancy here? I have an opinion. Yeah, I believe it's because Josh Barnett, if you want to use that as an example, I do. He doesn't strike you and doesn't look like the type of guy who's on steroids. Right. So people forget. Where you look at Cyborg and you go, uh, it's like Gabby Garcia. Like, wait a second, that does not look like a woman. That's a good point. You know, so you kind of go like, that's not normal. So she's on some shit. It's a constant reminder of mm. whether she's that way naturally or what. Now, you kind of go, hey, I think that's why. Because that, that, that leads credence to the Vitor Belfort TRT one. Mm -hmm. He got the most shit out of anybody ever, but he was doing it legally. He was fucking yoked. But he was, he was <laughs> over the range. He had veins everywhere. It was but ridiculous. Did, and did you see his body? Like, no. oh, my God. It's oh, so, the new one? Yeah, yeah, it's all pudgy. Yeah, it's not good. This I think this weigh-in was the worst he's ever looked post uh, USADA. Right. It's, so, it's just so depressing. It is. That was the greatest era in MMA. The Vitor Belfort TRT era. God. Oh, God. The knockouts is so sweet. He was on fire. Spinning wheel kicks. Oh, yeah. Like, what, what are you doing? This guy never throws <laughs> kicks. He's crazy. It, 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 like, he was always just known for his hands. Yeah. Now he's throwing kicks. I think his heart's going to explode one and day. And he's arm barring John Jones and fucking really? breaks his arm, you know? Mm -hmm. God damn. That was good times, Matt. Yep. Will um, we get back to the good times someday? Probably not. So we have to move on. Okay. We have to we have to we have to just decide that it is gonna be what it's gonna be, man. Well well Chris there's some other Chris Cyborg stuff. I gotta find it, but I know she was talking about Ronda Rousey again and mm -hmm. she was also saying maybe they don't have a division for me because I don't have blonde hair and blue eyes. And big tits. Yeah. You're missing those two, sorry. And she saw Ronda shadow boxing and the shadow one again. <laughs> like she keeps nice. going with that. There's a rumor going around that she's gonna fight before the end of the year against uh, was it Nunez? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so, so remains to be seen. Yeah, there someone just posted a uh, picture with her and she looks like she's in fight shape. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I saw a couple in the last month or two. We had that one that we 
she's out shopping or something, and she, she looks like she's, you know, getting in shape. You know, maybe. Just fight the cyborg. <laughs> and then cyborg put a picture of a fortune cookie that said something along like the Candyman line, like, don't mention my name three times. <laughs> cyborg. <laughs> that was a freaky movie. Yeah. Um, she's coming to get you. She's yeah. She's coming to get you. So let's talk about the Candyman. Which happens to be Conor McGregor this time around. Okay. I heard some rumor that he got fined a shit ton of money for for a yeah. little bottle incident. So it's kind of good that we missed a, a show yesterday and got to film it today because I got to watch a good portion of this Nevada State Athletic Commission hearing. Mm -hmm. So at the end of this, he gets a hundred and fifty thousand dollar fine. Ouch! He has to do fifty hours of community service. Okay. And he has to film a public service announcement for the NSAC uh, with an anti-bullying campaign. God. And it, this Seriously. is the most ridiculous shit ever. So the, the, the Nevada attorney general that was presenting the case in front of them said, okay, let's, let's just do a $25,000 fine mm -hmm. and 25 hours of community service. And then it just starts going crazy. <laughs> it was piling this on. Fucking, these <laughs> commissioners, bad. like, remember we were talking about Nick Diaz. Fuck your lifetime ban! Fuck this guy! Five years! Five years! <laughs> like, they're just pulling shit out of their yeah. ass again. So wow. this Pat Lundvall bitch, she, again, just, uh, oh. And we mean bitch in the nicest now, sense of the Now, fuck word. that woman, okay? okay? She's pulling shit out and, oh, let's do 10% again. You know, he makes a lot of money. He can afford this. We need to make it pretty significant. Let's do, uh, you know, 10%. What do he make? Three million? Okay, $300,000 fine. Like, are you out of your fucking mind? He threw water bottles and monster energy cans. He didn't fucking hit anybody. Maybe one person got hit, but nobody got injured. So really, we're talking about what? $150,000 for throwing water bottles. Well, you know, the one thing that I'm, it sounds very similar and even worse than what John Jones got for some of his antics. Yeah, he got 10% of his, uh, he they're, had they're 50 big hours percentage. of community service and all this stuff too. It, it just seems like, he didn't no, strike anybody. No. They got into a physical altercation, and Cormier threw a fucking shoe. Right. You're telling me a shoe <laughs> is no less lethal than that a water bottle? I love Come it. Come on. I, I literally, every time you say that, I, I picture that video, and I'm just dying because it's the most ridiculous. Literally, the man, a grown-ass man, took his fucking shoe off and threw it at somebody. Mm. That's ridiculous. That's Which is also as ridiculous as throwing a monster can, but... Didn't hit anybody. Well, I, I thought he hit some girl or something. No, no. I, I, I wonder too. Like, how much of that was ridiculous, like I idiocy, or was it just spectacle, or what? And and I how much was staged? Like, one right. of the commissioners was kind of alluding to that fact that you know this stuff happens all the time. It was like, oh, it's the day before. You know they're gonna do something. What is it gonna be this time? Right. This time it was water bottles. Really, are, is there any fine that we can impose? Is there any community service we can impose that's really going to stop this? Probably not, but they do it anyway. And then I don't know how they got this public service announcement shit through. I don't know if it was Connor's attorney that was representing <laughs> him that suggested this or if it was Pat Lundvall. It's like, let's use Connor. Let's do this public service announcement. Let's get him on the website. And let's get, then we'll do this at all professional. Like, what the fuck? Why don't you just ask him to service your pussy while you're at it? Like You probably would. And then two of the commissioners were joking, like, let's put our, ourselves in this public service announcement. Like, you guys, it's a fucking mockery, this whole thing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how any of this is legal. Why we still continue to fight in Nevada? It's, so, it's ridiculous. And I think McGregor's attorney said it, too. Like, do you, do you want fighters to make less money? Because now they're gonna really not want to have a big purse. Because anytime something comes before you, you're just looking to take a percentage off. Right. This is horseshit. I I just I, I I wonder what their motivation is. Because is it money? Is it is it to set examples? I mean, what's a service announcement? I mean, what's that really gonna do in the grand scheme of things? I don't know. I mean. Is it really going to help the bullying situation? Was he bullying? Do a goddamn thing. He wasn't bullying. As a matter of fact, I would say that the, the Diaz camp was the one who was bullying people God. by being all fucking weird. Just wait till he goes in front of them. What's he going to get? Yeah, when's that going to happen? I don't know. <laughs> I think on Monday. He's getting fined two million. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> if, so if, if he got one hundred and fifty thousand, yeah. fucking Diaz. Like, they hate Diaz. Yeah. 
You may get a lifetime ban. Lifetime ban. That's all we know. You made two million dollars. Because no, you know he, you made he's zero. Because Connor came in and was all apologetic. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I acted a fool. It'll never happen again. You tell me Nate Diaz is gonna come in like <laughs> He's gonna that. be like his brother. I plead the fifth. He might come in and start hucking water fifth. bottles at them. Fuck you, motherfucker. Two nine. Remember that though. Diaz is like I plead the fifth. Yeah. Fifth Amendment. Fifth. <laughs> fifth Amendment. That's <laughs> not answering shit. I plead shit. the fifth. <laughs> not like the Dave Chappelle shit. shit. Come on. Nothing. I have no the comment. Fifth. My comment is I plead the fucking fifth. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's crazy. But, you know, Nevada's a big thing. Maybe they can figure out some other state to have these big fights in. I don't know. That's the only way you get around this is just fuck, fuck Move it Nevada. to some other state. I don't know where you'd move it to. I don't know. Chicago! <laughs> we always get the shit cards. <laughs> yeah. Then they always, the last time they came, it was warm. But every other time they've come in winter. It's freezing as cold. Yeah. At least Conor McGregor took it in stride. He, he posted a tweet. He said, I get fined more than these bums get paid. He's right, though. I know. $150,000 <laughs> fine is more than a lot of these guys get paid, which is kind of sad, Scary. but Billy got a raw deal. Uh, I'm okay with a 25 and, and 25. $25,000 fine, 25 hours of community service. I'm with you. I got to say, Oof. Matt, I, I've never done this before I, that Dad. I recall, but I feel like we're having a good show, Matt. I feel like this is one. This is a Are good you one. jinxing us? No, I'm just saying I feel like we're on a roll. Okay. Let's keep it going. Hit me! <laughs> His computer just Hit died. You? <laughs> Literally? <laughs> no. I can't throw a good left from right here. That's right. Uh, let's talk about Nate Diaz. <clears throat> so, oh. we mentioned him. Did you see what USADA gave him? Oh, well, I heard something about the vaporizer. Thing. Yeah, they gave him a public warning for... What is that? I'm not sure. You, I don't either, for using his vape pen. Don't do <laughs> things that are good for your body because right. you're still in competition. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's fucked up. Hey, you want to see? Here's something interesting. So I, I went to the USADA website and they have the WADA oh. prohibited list. Oh, geez. What is the so, supplements that are prohibited? Yeah. So just kind of see how in depth the pages. I can't even turn the pages if there's like. A hundred different substances on each page. Holy fuck balls. That's a lot of stuff there. Like if you're a fighter, are you really gonna maintain every single page in this book? Some of the stuff say. I mean, it's kinda hard. And I think I think Frank Mir just said it's pretty ridiculous the testing that USADA does, and I think they're just trying to justify their their pay by over testing everybody. It's fucking ridiculous. Holy cow, some of the stuff I've never even heard of this stuff. There's a lot of shit out here, Matt. There <laughs> is. Where is, this, uh, where is this stuff even found? Narcotics? I don't even know. I don't even look at it all because the, the font is so tiny that they're just trying to make it less of nine pages, but it could really be 16 wow. if you expanded the font out. It, it, again, we are at a, a crazy state of gene affairs. Gene doping, no gene doping. Why? I want, I want a gene dope. Wow. That's insanity. Yeah, I think they're going to over way over the top of the shit. I'll put this here. Yeah, just throw it on the ground. We, don't, we don't subscribe. Fuck that noise. We don't subscribe. No. What else you got? Well, uh, one of the last things. Tim Kennedy was saying the cost to provide medicals to fight at UFC 205 in New York mm -hmm. is going to cost him personally... Anywhere between five and ten thousand dollars for all the shit he's got to do. Wow! So Why? he has to do new blood work, and then it lists a bunch of shit: urinalysis, new physical exam, an EKG, uh, chest X-ray, a new eye exam, an MRI, brain scan, and some other shit. I think this is. Why is he paying for all that? I don't know, but I think this is part of the stipulations that New York is imposing on all the fighters because it's the first event and I think to get it passed through their retarded assembly remember all the crazy fuckers that yeah. and I want to talk about all that again like holy <sighs> shit but wouldn't the UFC cover this like is <laughs> see this is also coming from Tim Kennedy who also thinks ISIS is after him 24 7 that fucker sleeps probably with a fucking M16. He just he sleeps yeah. like this in his bed. He's uh, ready to go anytime. Cock in one hand, M16 in the other. M16 in the other. That's right. Um, 
I don't know. You know, he's always been outspoken, so I don't know how much of that's true or not true. But or maybe he said it and then he's meant it as in that's what the price of it is and someone will cover it. I don't, I don't know. But it's a, it's a lot of shit. It's kind of ridiculous. I don't believe it. No. No. Nope. Fuck New York. Fuck New York. I like your attitude. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> Fuck them. What was that? Uh, was that? Uh, God damn it. Here we go. <laughs> I'm thinking Chris Weidman. Uh, remember no, he, said fuck, he said fuck him. Uh, what's his name? He was on the Dana White show. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. My brain you you got to give me some breadcrumbs here. Big ass arms. Spaghetti eating. Jiu-jitsu. That's it. See? I got you there. And remember Mancera when he said fuck what? him, good fuck him, when, when Anderson Silva got his leg broken? Yeah, said, okay. Good fuck him. Gotcha. Um, that's where I was going. See? Stay with us, okay? You got to understand how my fucked up brain works, especially at this hour. That's right. It's all good. Always at this is that, hour. Is that it for news? I think so. Let's, let's go Wait. into some ass to nuts. Ass to nuts? Yes. Ass like to ass, nuts. It's like ATM? That's right. A to N. Do you think female fighters will age the same way as some of the men age in the sport? Like how Royce, here we go, Royce Gracie fought Ken Shamrock last year. Will we see Joanna versus Rose when they're like 50 years old in Bellator? No. <laughs> you don't think so? No. You don't think the women are going to throw down? No. Into their I don't think so. Late 50? <laughs> no. I think maybe, but not really. I don't know. I, I'm telling you, you, once a fighter, always a fighter. You'll never be able to Yo, scratch that itch. With the exception to uh, Ronda Rousey, she'll be out and done. She may already be out and done. I think Chris Cyborg is going to be that one that keeps Six coming around. Forever. Fuck yeah. Perhaps. Could be the shooter box. Eh. They might not want to give it up. Uh, Jorge. Yeah, fucking, I can't do the last name. Suevas. We'll see. How do you score Bisbing versus Endo? I thought it was 48 47 for Bisbing, unfortunately. Yep. Uh, ben Lees, do you think hometown advantage helped Bisbing with the decision? And who would you like to see him? Fight next: the winner of Rockhold versus Jacare, or the winner of Weidman versus Romero. Weidman Romero, give him something. New well, shit. the tough thing is if the hometown advantage did that help Bisbing with the decision. Just the guy with the forty-nine, forty-six. That one was fucking way off spot. Um, Romero. Here's the problem: every time, and I know his, he was out because of a tainted supplement, but every time somebody comes back from testing positive for steroids, they typically get knocked out. They typically get knocked out in the next fight, and they almost always lose. So I don't I don't see how Romero's going to win that fight just based on the statistics. I would like to see a Romero fight, because I'd like to see what Romero does to Michael Bisping. Because I think out of all those guys, that's probably the most yeah. terrifying guy. Probably. If he can go five rounds, he could. Uh, cardio. It may not need to go that long. No, but just thinking about how dynamic he is, mm -hmm. I'd think like to see him fight. I think he finishes Mike inside one. Either him or even Jacare. I'd like to see. Mm -hmm. Just get Bisping on the ground. What happens? Oh no! He finishes him Mike inside one too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mark Brimlow asks. Who do you guys think are the most feared fighters past and present, and how would they face up against each other, prime versus prime? Feared fighters? I've got I've got good ones right here. So Anthony Rumble Johnson, mm -hmm. current. Yep. Chuck Liddell, past. Hit those two up against each other. Wow, that would be crazy. And they're in the same weight class, which is the even crazier thing. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a really good one. Uh, I like Vanderlei Silva, and oh, shit, Anthony Rumble Johnson would be a good one too. <laughs> Back the Pride Vanderlei. Right. Oh my God, it's scary. It would be crazy. Um, I think you know one guy maybe that doesn't get mentioned is like Paul Harris is pretty fucking scary. Like when he's you know. Because you don't know what he's gonna do. No. <laughs> you know anybody who fought that guy has got balls of steel. Wow. Um, yeah, that's I wonder, a good question. Just on a side note, if we were talking just a straight jujitsu, I can't fucking talk, a straight jujitsu match, Paul Harris versus Maya. 
Yeah, but Pahars is so fucking strong. I, I know, don't, but I don't is know. Mayo's Jiu-Jitsu good enough to neutralize the Perhaps. size advantage? I'm trying to think, like, the leg lock game is so different, so I don't know if these old school guys like Maya have a ton of defense against it. I know it wasn't really... I wonder really if he's ever... I would imagine he's had to cross circles with them at some point. Sure. Either in training or something, but... Just a side note, that would be an interesting match. It would. You know? Yeah. I'm curious. Hmm. Move right along. Isaac Arape. My fellow New Zealander, Dan Hangman Hooker, was fit and ready to step in on short notice to fight Ricardo Lamas. Mm -hmm. Pound sign, Hangman for Manila. Thoughts on the cancellation of the Manila fight card? Pound sign, Ingo, rape train, bandwagon. Thank you. you Thoughts train. on the... I'm saddened, and I'm also happy at the same time. I don't think that matchup was... A good one for BJ. No, no. <laughs> and then there were all these rumors. Like someone in the MMA media was saying that all the UFC employees were going to get drug tested. And if they tested positive, they were going to steal all their passports. Like complete bullshit. What? Like, a, a country is not going to do that. And someone was propagating that bullshit. But, you know, again, it's kind of curious, though, that you have to cancel an entire card because the main event... <laughs> It, you know, that's John Jones, Dan Henderson, UFC 151. But, I mean, I think you're right. You, none of us really wanted to see BJ Penn versus Ricardo Lamas. I think, you know, I want to see Penn fight, but definitely not top tier. That's I tough, thought the yeah. Dennis Seaver fight made the most sense. Yeah. Give him someone where he probably can win, mm -hmm. lower tiered, not a young killer. Yeah, Lamas has got a lot of cardio, and he's <laughs> it's a tough fight. You know what I don't he's know. at right now. Last time we saw BJ, he wasn't looking too good, so. No, it's when he was, he was stiff as a board, light as a feather. Yes. And I think this is it. Rodrigo Machado will close it out. It's time! Pound sign, nuts rule. Pound sign, Matt Rape Train. Pound sign, Ingo Sugar Daddy. Thank you. Would you rather be gossiped about or never talked about at all? I don't care either way. You can gossip about me all day, yeah. all night, all day. Would you rather have a daughter who's addicted to drugs and or alcohol or have a daughter who's anorexic? I would choose neither, but they're they're all equally sh fucked up, so I, I don't know that there's a good herb. I mean, they can all be cured. I, fuck. I would, I would maybe pick the alcohol because I think that takes longer. There's more chance of it recovering anorexia? I don't know. Fucking stupid question. I take the anorexia because I'll fatten that bitch up. I'll make her eating all her? sorts of shit. She don't have a choice. Like, I'll buy her. the food in this house. This is what you're her. eating. Max, like, eat this. I'll watch Eat you. this oil. Eat it. Yeah. Suck it down. That's right. Would you rather have a perfect memory or enhance your appearance tenfold? You can't improve on beauty like this, so I take. Enhance my memories. Yeah. I feel like my memory's Perfect slipping memory. as an agent. I, <laughs> no. Definitely, especially this time of night, I would say I'll take my memory. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, looks are overrated. Memories last forever. They do. Would you rather have your naked picture online and never be able to remove it or jump off a bridge and survive but have broken bones and a slow recovery? <laughs> I'm fine with my naked picture. Me too. Who I gives a care. shit? It ain't pretty, but who fucking cares? You can look at my cock and balls all day, all night. You might. I, ho I hope it's a cold day, too, when you got one of those, like, turtles going. That's right. It's fucking, like, hiding. I want to have the tiniest and we in there, it's like, ever Whoa, what for happened? everybody. You know? It's ain't no porn dick here. I'm a grower, not a shower, baby. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You'll take it. That's right. Just the tip. And right into knowledge. He's I have, clicking. I have I'm, some knowledge. I'm I forgot to pull it up, but... uh I'm scared. We've got, I'm probably going to have to eat an ad here. Are you going to show me your rectal exam? I'm going to show you me naked. Nice. Pictures. One, one, yeah. one, once all this comes up, oh, i got to eat a Miller High Life commercial. Oh, yeah. But we've got Valentina Shelvenko yeah. or Shelvachenko doing some belly dancing. I'll just leave everybody with this. Oh, jeez. I'm liking this. I like the tattoos. I forgot. One of my friend's moms was a belly dancer. Yeah? But she never belly danced for us. I always was going to offer it. Interesting. I'm a big fan of this belly dancing. I could say that. I would agree. This is quite... The music works well with this. I'll, I will probably post a good portion She's of... She's what, Russian? Yeah, like, like a Russian uh, thing? Maybe Polish. 
Russian. See, the thing Maybe about, Russian. The thing or about Polish. the Polish women, man, they are just, it's like a fucking flame, flame ball of like fiery fire, but dude, you know what, it, what it, you cannot get too close to the sun, Matt, and that, yes, I feel like can. that's one of those where you're like, wow, you want to rent that, you don't want to purchase that, you want to rent it and then let it go. <laughs> You can't buy it because like it's one of too those expensive. That cleans your house. Yeah, it's too expensive. You cannot own that. You have to. You just rent it or lease it and then let it go. Let someone else buy that because that property is too pricey. You cannot handle it. Oh, I can handle. it. Can you? Oh yeah. Yeah, they have high expectations, man. All the Polish. Don't worry. The, the females I see around, they like they or the men with the men. They got like Porsches and all this super expensive shit, and I, I think there's like some stigma there. I don't know. Maybe she's Russian. I don't know about the Russians, but definitely the Polish population around here. They're very uh, showy, I would say. Flashy. They wear tracksuits. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool with the tracksuits. Nothing like, <laughs> like Grand Theft like Auto good, cool? Yeah, <laughs> no, dude, we should totally do that. Nothing like a good <laughs> fucking tracksuit. Just roll up in places. Let's like, just up? roll, man. That's how, that's how we're going. We're going to go to Colorado just wear tracksuits. Track Look at <laughs> these motherfuckers. <laughs> awesome. They have to be skin yeah, tight too. Like, rah. that's fine. I'll, I'll cycle up too. Sporting no tracksuit. Double crazy. my uh, testosterone levels. I'm gonna get on the gear then too. Right. Just get yoked. You have the doctor. How long does it take? Three months. You could probably do some damage in about a month, okay. depending upon how high you want to go. You want to go to Vitor or Belfort level? Uh, if I'm doing, you know me. You, well, you, when you start, you never know how much you need to dose. So you got to take a good load. Take a good load to start. I never half-ass anything, Matt. I'm all in. Like, don't worry, I, I can I show you how to do all the shots. We'll, we'll fucking take care of it. You can do it yourself. Uh, I might pass out. No, nah, you'll be fine. <laughs> this, the crazy thing was, it's actually easier to give yourself a shot in the ass than it is the thigh. The really? first, yeah. So you don't have to look at it? Because you're looking in the mirror. A uh, big ass mirror. Uh, so it's almost like it's somebody else. Right. So uh, it's like the first time I put it in my thigh, it's like, oh, whoa, this is weird. I'm getting a little wheezy here, <laughs> even though I've done it in my ass a whole bunch of times. Huh. And if you take that out of context, it sounds really bad. It's all good, man. I'm not judging. It's all good. You gotta be who you, who you are, man. That's right. <laughs> I think that's all I got. You got anything else for mm -hmm. uh, this week? Nope. See? Told you. Great show. And that's out done. Been this week's edition of Many Notes. My name is Ingo Weigold. Matt Griffith. Thanks for playing us. Thanks for checking out the show this week. You can support MMA Nuts by working with our sponsors, GoDaddy.com, where you can get 99cent.coms with code MMANuts99. You can also save 30% off new orders with code MMANuts30. And lastly, a dollar per month economy hosting is back for one year with code MMANuts1H.